Hey guys, Wave618 here. So we're going to do an update today on Bitcoin. We've had a lot of eventful price action yesterday, big sell off in Bitcoin. Uh, in my last video, we were talking about a potential bullish setup with a tight risk reward, which obviously broke down. We can argue whether um, backed as a catalyst was the reason for that. But whatever the reason, uh, we got to look now as to whether this is a massive uh, sell off in Bitcoin? Is it showing true weakness within the Bitcoin chart or is this simply a shakeout um, and we're going to see prices rebound to the upside? So these are the main talking points in today's video. Um, all right, so if you're interested, stay tuned. guys so let's get started so first things first I want to start from where I left off from my last video so I will talk about the um, pitchfork first of all that I was particularly focusing on in my last video so let's just pull that up so it was this pitchfork and you can see clearly uh, we completely broke down out of the pitchfork and it happened very very dramatically which is what we often see when these pitchforks fail to hold we see a big sell-off Okay. Now I was talking about how this could have been a truncated WXY. Now you can see it's looking like a more regular WXY. But I was suggesting it may be truncated in the sense that a lot of the altcoins were looking like they were finding support, in particular Ripple. Um, now it also coincided with the uh, the the backed announcement. So that was what the there was a very tight risk reward essentially. So the risk the stop loss could be placed very close to where current price action was. So uh, in hindsight, was it a trade that I should have taken? Um, probably, to be honest, uh, you've got to accept that you're not going to win every trade. You've got to look at probabilities and you've got to take into account risk and reward. So yeah, uh, in hindsight, no regrets, but we uh, live and learn. And now we've got to reassess what's going to happen next. So looking at the chart right now obviously the way i was looking at it was this being a one two three four and then our fifth wave going up now the fact that we've broken out of the pitchfork for me makes me very concerned about this being a continued impulse to the upside okay so there's two arguments either it's not impulsive first of all or secondly this was a five wave completion. And I think I've mentioned before, I certainly have mentioned it to my Discord group, that there is a five wave count for this. So we can call this a wave one, two, three up to here, running flat wave four, and a final fifth wave up. Okay, in which case we could be correcting the whole move. So this could be our um, major wave one, and now we're going into a major wave two. So that's one possibility, okay? Now, the other argument, <clears throat> is whether this was in fact um, impulsive altogether. Now the only way uh, I can see this being corrective, and I've given it every opportunity, I, I'm very, I've tried to be objective and give both arguments as, you know equal opportunity. Um, so there's a very interesting pitchfork that I've uh, noticed. Um, and actually someone on Twitter, uh, one of my followers had highlighted it actually. I think his name is Rob. Um, so credit to Rob for that. But yeah, I just want to pull up that pitchfork. So let's hide that one a moment. And we're going to show you this one. Now, I'm going to explain why we've got this first, second, third pivots here. Well, basically, the first and second are quite obvious. It's the same as the pitchfork I had on just a moment ago. But you can see the third pivot is what is different. Instead of being here, it's been shifted to here. Now, you will know, depending on how long you followed me, you will know that initially I was looking at this as the first wave and this is the second wave. And basically, when price was around here, I was anticipating 3.2K, which you'll know if you've been following my channel. When it got to 3.2K, I was hesitant to get in as it didn't look too impulsive to me. I didn't like the look of this. It was all looking corrective. Okay, there was a lack of volume and I was hesitant to get in. 
And it wasn't until there was a big downward pitch up for this price action. It wasn't until that broke to the upside that I switched my bias. I think it was around 5.2K. Uh, and then we, we shot up pretty violently straight through this horizontal resistance here. Now, up until this point, I had a corrective count. I was looking at it as an A, ascending triangle B. I'll zoom in on this in a moment and a C up to here, and I was looking for a sell-off from here, but actually from that point we broke to the upside of that uh, downtrending pitchfork, that major pitchfork, and that's when I switched my bias from bearish to bullish, okay? Now, as I say, I wanna just zoom in on this here, just to explain this third pivot. So, let's go on the four hourly. So the way I was looking at it was as uh, so as a triangle, so this was our first impulse, so like an A, and then we had a triangle which was in itself an A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, you can see the E finishes at this point here, that's where the third pivot is, and then we start going up, and I think it was to around this point, I was saying that was the end of this upward move, which was corrective in nature, and then it was gonna come down. However, we saw a massive break to the upside, and it all looked very, very aggressive and impulsive. Now, I think it's very, very interesting, this pitchfork that we've got plotted here, using this as our first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. And the reason being is you can see straight from here, we go and test the median line twice. So this is an original pitchfork, by the way, which generally follows impulsive price action. Uh, not That doesn't mean it has to be an impulse. Uh, it just means that it's aggressive price action. Um, so first of all, yeah, since our uh, third pivot was in, we tested the median line a couple of times, came back, you know, consolidated before we then broke through the median line. Where do we stop? We stop at the upper median line. Where do we come down to? The median line, then up to the upper median line, really respecting these lines really, really nicely. Then we fall short of the median line and we power through up to the upper warning line where we then start going sideways. So during this sideways move, we've come down, tested the median line, powered back up to the upper median line, down to the median line, found, went moved sideways, gone under the median line, and then we're using the median line as resistance to come down lower, shot through this, showing weakness in, the, in this uh, whole sequence up now. And who knows, are we gonna find support at this lower warning line? Now, if this is a valid count, so if this is our A, B, and the rest of this is C, yeah, in which case it's corrective, A, B, C, uh, well, first of all, the Elliott wave, the Fibonacci relationship between, let me just label it, so A, B, C, let's make that a bit visible, let's leave it like that, so A, B, C. Now there is a nice Fibonacci relationship. So if that's our A, uh, B is our triangle which finishes at this point, so you extend it from there. The C comes absolutely to the tick, to the um, 4.236 Fib extension. So that's one reason why I do think this count could be very valid. Now, it's very unusual to see an A, B, C with a C wave that is so elongated. So we call this an elongated zigzag, okay? Now these pretty much only occur, so to define it as elongated, it means the C wave is greater than 1.618, okay? Now these pretty much exclusively occur in triangles, okay? And in a contracting triangle, it's in the first couple of waves and if it's in an expanding triangle where the waves get bigger as each wave develops, it's in the latter two waves that you might find it. So, what does that mean if this, if, if this is an elongated zigzag, which is only found within triangles? It basically means it's, it's putting out the suggestion that this whole move is gonna be part of a triangle. Or alternatively, this was a three wave move down. This is the start of a triangle. And then we're gonna have another correction sideways. So they're the two, two options. Um, 
But as I say, these elongated zigzags should only be found uh, in triangles. That's as per uh, Glenn Neely. So if you want to read his textbook, that's Mastering Elliott Wave. Um, that's generally the book that I always refer to for Elliott Wave. And um, yeah, so should that be the case, there's the argument that this, uh, if you've seen my previous video, I think it was the video where we were talking about potentially on a macroscopic level, uh, Bitcoin going to 350K. I talked about the long-term count in Bitcoin. So check out that if you want to see my full count, where we talk about the count from the Genesis 10 years ago. Uh, but basically, I was calling that this was the end of a wave four because it, in terms of price retracement and time that had surpassed, I felt that it definitely fit, filled all the criteria for the completion of a correction, okay? Um, it, and that's why I was then looking at this uh, recently, I've been looking at this as being impulsive. However, there is obviously the argument that it could be a more complex correction that we're developing and it could be an A, so it could be a major triangle. So it could be an A, B, C, D, E, in the sense that it could be a contracting triangle. Um, <clears throat> so let's just clean this, clean the chart up a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's one way of looking at it. Now, there's only one major thing that I dislike about that, and it's the fact that with a contracting triangle, generally the volume should always contract throughout the throughout the pattern and you can see here the volume here is greater than the volume at the, at the beginning if we start our triangle here so that's one thing that puts me off a little bit okay however i think if you go on the four hourly that's not as prominent the when you compare the the volume here so no it's still much higher volume than the volume here all right so yeah, as I say, that's one thing that puts me off the triangle count, but I'm not writing it off because for me, I really do like this pitchfork. The fact that price adheres to the pitchfork very nicely. We've also got a very nice Fibonacci relationship between the first impulse, the correction, ascending triangle, and then the resultant uh, impulse up, um, so the C wave. So that's one possibility that I'm looking at. Uh, and you can see here from here you can certainly count five waves. You've got your wave one, running flat two, three, running flat four, five. So because of this impulsive aggressive move, you've got these running flat sequences. Um, <clears throat> not so much alternation, mind you, but um, yeah, you can still count those five waves. So they're the main two ways that I'm looking at it at this moment in time. So, as I say, there's the possibility of it being a major triangle, in which case it doesn't mean that we're going to consolidate for ages because it means that we're going into the C wave. So we've got our, if it is a major triangle, we've got our A wave, B wave, we're in C, might come down a bit further. I've been really thinking that we're going to test this horizontal range here, probably around 6,500, after which, so if we just label A, B, let's say C comes to here. And then your D and E need to fit in pretty... I've chosen the wrong tool. Bear with me, sorry about that. So A, B, sorry, A, B, C, D and D. Something like that, okay? So essentially all it means is going down, up, then a little pullback before we break out to the upside. Okay, so from a bullish point of view, it's, it's not too bad, yeah? Um, it does obviously, I just do still anticipate a further pullback. I'll address that in a moment. We'll zoom in on the shorter time frames. But yeah, that's one possible outlook. And the alternative for me is obviously if this is impulsive uh, and we're going to correct the whole thing, so it's going to be a wave one, a wave two, again, I'd probably expect to find support around this range, around a similar point, in which case we go up from here and instead of this major pullback, which we may still see, we could see a one, two, three, four, five, something like that. So either way, it could look pretty similar. The only difference is would be the wave count for this D wave. If it is a triangle, it'd be three waves, whilst if it was impulse, it'd be, it'd be five waves. <clears throat> okay, but in terms of looking for 
a place to get in off this retracement. I think it's reasonable for both counts. Okay, so that's my primary focus. I'm looking at where to get in off this retracement. Okay, so they're the two major ways I'm looking at it. And in terms of where to get in, I, I, it's going to be pretty similar for both. There's a pitchfork to the downside, which we'll be looking at in a moment. And that's how I'm probably going to time that entry. Um, the only other thing to consider is if this is in fact a wave one, two, three, four, and then we go higher. I do not think this is my, I think this is the least probable count now that we've broken out of that other pitchfork. So just bringing on the other pitchfork. So that's this one. Now that we've broken out the pitchfork, I think that's the most, the least probable. As I say, I like price to be contained within the pitchfork. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, calling this wave one and two this wave three and then fourth wave has come out. Now the thing is we have found support at the 0 0.382 retracement of uh, the third wave. Yeah, so we're sat at the 0 0.382 right now at 8,000. <clears> However, I don't think it's gonna hold to be honest. I think we have got another leg down coming. Um, and as I say, the concerning thing for me is it was breaking down out of this pitchfork. As I say, this is my least favorite count mainly because we've now broken to the downside of this pitchfork. All right. All right, now let's zoom in. So I'm going to take off this pitchfork. Uh, take that one off. And we're going to leave this one on for now because as I say, this has been holding price action the best. Now keep in mind, if this is going to be a major triangle, this pitchfork doesn't have to hold, okay? Because it was mainly for the move up. So we could break to the downside of it, potentially. That said, we'd probably be overshooting this uh, horizontal support here. So like the, it's likely we probably will find ourselves staying within uh, the, this major pitchfork. Now, I wanna show you, just by adding on, sometimes when you're looking at um, price action on the higher time frame, so we're on the daily time frame, um, you can add on these extra lines like the 1.5 0 0.5 and you'll see we've actually hit the 1.5 to the T okay so we hit it really really nicely here that's where we got our bounce we found our wick okay that's one thing now there's another pitchfork for this move down now for this move down you know I've been looking at it as a WXY originally when it was come came to 9300 I was calling it a truncated WXY obviously that count um, has been invalidated and we're now seeing more of a regular count. So we've got this W, X, and the Y. So this is where there's a very nice Fibonacci relationship. So we've got a nice one-to-one -one at the 8,000 here. Okay, so I know there's quite a few reasons why we've found a bit of support, a little bit of a bounce at this point. So we've got the one-to-one -one here on the WXY. We've got the 0 0.382 of the move up from this point here to here. The 0 0.382 came to this point. Uh, and then we've got the, the 1.5 line of this major upward pitchfork also. One other reason for a bit of a bounce at this level, if we look at the 200 day moving average, that also, that's the black line here, that also is holding price at this moment in time. So that's four reasons why there's a bit of uh, support here. On top of that, a fifth reason, you'll see the highs here on the daily chart. So we found the candle closes around this level and then a couple of wicks at this level here, bringing it across again. So that's five things that are actually keeping price at this point. Um, <clears throat> and I think maybe even a sixth thing. So if we look at volume at price, there is a high volume node at this level, well, around this level. So a bit of a transition from high volume to a, a sell off in volume here. Yeah, so where you see those transitions, we often see turnarounds. Um, so yeah. Plenty of reasons for why we've seen a little bounce at this point. You can see we've got quite a uh, good volume coming in as well. However, I'd be cautious at this point. I do think there is potential for it to come down lower. So let's talk about that now. So let's clean the chart, taking off the volume. Um, all right, so the downward pitchfork is what we really need to keep an eye on now. Before I go on to that, there is obviously, a, there is another count. So we could talk about this being, um, Three waves down W, our X wave could be a triangle because we've seen converging volume. You can see volume came down nicely here. It was all trending nicely. When you see that, 
you should always think about the possible of a contracting uh, triangle pattern uh, playing out. So there is the argument for so triangle and then we'll label that A, B, C, D, E, like so. There is the possibility, I'm not against this count at all. I mean, I think it's very valid. We've got a three wave move down, then we've gone into an X wave, and then we could have a um, another three wave count to the downside, making our Y wave. Okay, so far, if that is our count, we'd do the fib extension of the Y wave. So that's our W. I'd extend the Y from where E finished at this point. So here we've hit the 0.618. Okay, so often you will see Y is a 0.618 extension of W. Okay, but there's certainly obviously, you, there's no rule to say it has to hit the 0.618. We can always test the 0.786 or the one to one. Um, these are all very possible. Okay. Now for me, so I'm just showing you all the possible counts here, but either way, for me, my preliminary target is going to be around this horizontal range. Um, we did, in fact, close our futures gap at 8.5k. Um, there is a smaller gap at around 7.1k. Um, so pot potentially we could um, take price down that low. But as I say, if we are going to call this a five wave count to the top here, let's just take off volume, then the retracement, so if we do our fib retracement, we've not yet hit the 0.382. I think there's a good chance we could come and test the 0.5, and that's at 6,500, and it is finding uh, this uh, horizontal support here. So there is that possibility of us coming down to 6.5, I believe. <clears throat> So that's one of the main things I'm looking at. As I say, there is another futures gap at around 7.1K, so that would allow the fill of that. Um, and yeah, from, so yes, the pitchfork to the downside is what we're gonna talk about next, sorry. So taking that off, uh, pitchfork to the downside, so this one was the one that was holding price best. So you can see here, this has been holding price very, very nicely. It's the pitchfork that I'm mainly focusing on. As long as we're down within this pitchfork and price is on the, to the, you know, beneath these significant median lines, then it means the bears have got control of this market. Currently, we're just below the median line. So I wouldn't be looking to get in on Bitcoin at this moment in time. Um, <clears throat> So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. Usually I like to put these pivots so that it, they're in keeping with the Elliott wave sequence. However, I will sometimes play around with them because if there's another um, pitchfork that is holding price really, really nicely and the price is just bouncing off each medium line really nicely, for me, that's an indication that smart money is using that indicator to really determine where to buy and, and, and sell off. So. This pitchfork definitely seems to be holding price best, in my opinion. And um, yeah, we've hit the median line and found a bit of a bounce here. Um, so as I say, we could find ourselves coming down to the lower median line. Uh, that's, that's what I'm looking at at this moment in time. Um, I would need to see a big impulsive move to the upside before I would consider getting in on Bitcoin. Okay, there's too many the, the macroscopic picture, in, in my opinion, suggests that we need to, we're probably going to see a bigger retracement to the downside. Um, that's based on the fact that this could be a major triangle or alternatively, we've had a five wave count finish and we come down. For me, it needs to retrace further than this. Okay, so for those two reasons, I wouldn't, I don't want to jump in at this moment in time. If it wasn't for that, if I wasn't looking at the macroscopic picture, this would actually be a really good level to get in at because of the, I've mentioned those five reasons already. There is actually another one. Um, that's the Camarilla pivots. So we've bounced off the S4 also. Okay. So can, slightly front run it. We didn't quite hit it. Just as we saw here, we didn't quite hit the S3. Again, didn't quite retest the R4 here. 
So you can sometimes get it front run like that. But um, it's another bit of information that um, to take into consideration. So if it wasn't for this macroscopic picture and it looking like it needs to retrace further, this point, this 8K level, probably looks like a very good buy-in. Um, so I'm not writing it off. I'm just exerting caution at this moment in time. So basically, I want to see a very clean five-wave move up in Bitcoin before I... Uh, before I look for a retracement on that um, to get in. Um, because at this moment in time, I do think, as I say, macroscopic picture-wise, it could retrace further with a preliminary target around 6.5K. That's what I'm looking at. So let's just clean that up. So as I say, these are the two pitchforks for me that are most significant at this moment in time. So major pitchfork using first pivot, second pivot, third pivot here. So that's uh, for those of you that want to plot it, it falls on the 25th of March and um, and the downward pitchfork here. Yeah, so that's where your first pivot, second pivot and third pivot are. So yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes what I'm looking out for on Bitcoin. I'm not going to uh, jump into the, the altcoins in today's video. Uh, I've got a a big video to plan for for my cryptology group on um so <clears throat> i'm just planning that at the moment but um yeah i think i've pretty much summarized everything i want to say on bitcoin all the indicators that i'm looking at all the things i'm looking out for at the moment basically i'm expressing caution because of a potential pullback to 6.5k however i'll be closely monitoring the chart for a possible five wave move up on smaller time frames such as the 15 minute um, so if we go on the 15 minute, so we saw this bounce here, but if you zoom in, it's really, it doesn't look impulsive. You know, if, if at best it's a, a leading diagonal and I don't like trading leading diagonals, basically, you know, if you've had a major sell off, you expect a pretty convincing move up and you don't expect it to be a leading diagonal. Really, uh, you want to see a very nice, clean impulse five wave move up. Um, and we just haven't had that. So, uh, yeah, I'm of the opinion that we could easily roll over here. Maybe we could have a, a more complete correction. So we've gone up, retrace, maybe another leg up before then selling off. That's one possibility. But if we see good volume come in, a very nice impulse up, I will then look for the correction to get in on. But long term, I would want to wait, probably. Uh, definitely want to see us above this median line. Okay. And then, as I say, main obstacle, as I've mentioned previously, is this downsloping upper median line. I want to see us get above that. We've not really been above it convincingly since it's been start generated back here on the 10th of July. So, yeah, getting above that would be very significant in my eyes. Uh, so that's another thing that I'll be looking out for. So, yeah, I felt like I had to get a video out today explaining kind of how I'm reassessing things at this moment in time, because obviously... Um, I made a call how we're going to find support. Well, not saying we are going to find support, but I said that, that there was a setup for that. And obviously it didn't plan out. So yeah, I had to reassess. And uh, I hope I've made it clear what my updates are on the chart. So yeah, I think we'll wrap it up, guys. If you found value in the content, obviously leave a like. And uh, yeah, any queries, put them out in the comments below. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right, take care. Oh, 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 oh,